Okay, this here is Berkeley, and Berkeley is a girl, and a very pretty dog, and she's almost a year. Uh, the, one of the primary issues the Guardian wanted to work with, um, oh, we're gonna work on that a little bit, is uh, resource guarding. Now, a dog can uh, guard, in the wild, resource guarding is a natural skill. Um, we, would, we even had it ourselves. If I hunt and kill some fish and a bear comes, you know, and I'm really hungry, I'm gonna protect that fish from the bear, or I'm probably gonna let the bear have the fish, thank you. But, uh, you know, it's natural to protect your, your stuff. Dogs used to be in the wild, they would have to protect their stuff from other dogs or wolves or other animals that, predators that might come try to take their stuff. Uh, so basically, uh, one of the first things I did was I talked about introducing the concept of a draw. And I'll cover that really briefly. This is a high value item. This is normally kept off on a shelf because when the dog has this, it will not give it up. And when a dog is in a real resource guarding, it will absolutely bite you if you try to take the object away. Now, it doesn't always have to be an object. Sometimes it's food. Sometimes it's a location. Sometimes it's a person. And so a dog can guard many things. And because a dog resource guards does not mean that they are a bad dog or an aggressive dog. I've seen a lot of dogs that are very well behaved, very well mannered, but can develop resource guarding in very specific situations like their food bowl. Now, if your dog growls when it's eating from its bowl and another dog comes nearby, that is not resource guarding. That's saying, hey, you're making me uncomfortable because you're getting too close. And that's a distance that would be inappropriate while your dog is eating. But if a dog has something, it's resource guarding, typically its head is down if it's guarding an object. And you come by, it's rawr, rawr. They won't look up, they'll just keep their head down because they want to protect it. So we don't want to take the object away. Um, what we want to do is, first of all, teach the dog how to drop. And we do this by uh, practicing with what we call low value items. Now this, we're going to ignore that, this is a higher value item for the dog. So we're not going to use this for this particular exercise. Uh, we're going to use it for another exercise in a second. But to teach your dog to drop, when it has uh, a tennis ball or a rope toy or anything that normally doesn't guard, normally it does not guard, I want to basically condition the dog that dropping is a good thing. So I have the high value trainer, uh, tricky trainer here, which is your chicken liver. What I would do is when the dog has an object in its mouth, I take the, pull out the tricky trainer and I hold it right here. Let's come over here and show it from the side. I just hold it right here in front of the dog's nose. Now they'll try to take it with the object, the ball or whatever it is still in their mouth. I just hold it here. I don't let them have it. As soon as they drop the item, drop. I put the treat in their mouth and I say the word drop simultaneously. Now when we do this with low value items, after, we, after they drop it, they get the treat and then we walk away and they're able to get the ball or whatever the item is and they get to continue playing with it. So for them, they're more than happy to do it because you're making their situation better, which is really a microcosm of how you fix resource guarding. Uh, but what we want to do is make sure that we do this with a lot of low value items. Toys that the dog is the toys the dog is allowed to have. So uh, to make it easy for the guardians to practice this, what I suggested is we take like a ramekin or a little plastic container and put like 10 of these treats in there. And then set our goal throughout the day. We're gonna practice the drop 10 times. Uh, the more that we practice with low value items, then when the dog has uh, some underwear or a kitchen knife or something they're not allowed to have, just actually happened. She's done that. Um, but when they have something that's not, they're not allowed to happen and we just go and say drop, they spit the thing out ready to get the item. Now when we do that, I would typically trade it with like a bully stick or another high value item. So the dog says, well, they're not just taking my stuff away. But this is really the exception and not the rule when we're taking the things away. Normally what we want to do is just practice having a drop, reward them for dropping, and then they get the item again. Now this is mine right now because I am holding on to it. If I give it to her, it becomes hers because she has sole possession of it. So what I'm going to do in this exercise is we're going to practice ours. This is ours. So even if a dog is a resource guarder for a particular item, if I'm holding on to it, then it becomes ours. So this is not as high enough of a value item right now, so I'm going to use the bully stick, which we know is a high value item. So I've written out the object that I like to use are marrow bones, one inch marrow bones. That is really, they're frozen, but that marrow inside is really, really, uh, dogs really love it. So what I'm going to do is just let her chew on it. And I'm going to let her get, her get her good chew on. And if I just yank it away, then that's going to make the situation worse. So I want to get her used to chewing on it. And I would do this with the marrow bone as well. Now the marrow bone, you're just going to have to wash your hands off afterwards. It will stink. And make sure you keep it in the freezer. So whenever the dog has gotten really good chew on and they're really in the moment, they're enjoying themselves. Drop. And let them go back to chewing on it. Because I'm retaining ownership, we don't have to worry about the dog 
biting the hand because it's ours, not the dog's. So we want to practice this with any item that the dog, I would first practice with items the dog is not guarding, like a bully stick or a marrow bone or something like that. Now marrow bones are really, really, like I said, very interesting to dogs. So what I do is I hold it, let the dog lick on it, chew on it a while, and then every once in a while pull out another treat, drop. So I'm not yanking it away. When they disengage with this, that's when I give them the treat. I say drop, and then they get to go back to chewing on it again. So I'm not taking it away, I'm just incorporating a pause. Um, so that's the first step. Now the next step is eventually what we want to do is condition the dog to drop the high value items. We wouldn't do that until then we've already established with the low value items, the light shifting. Let's come over here, otherwise it's gonna look a little funny on the video. Um, so once we get to the point where I feel comfortable that the dog has practiced this enough, then I usually do this in confined areas. The dog can't run away. So I, I used to do this in my puppy playpen area, but maybe go into your bedroom, somewhere where the dog can't go under a couch or anything, I'm gonna take it away, but you can't leave the room. And then what I do is when the dog has the object, Drop. And we're doing the same thing, but this time we're not holding on to it. I'm holding on to it right now because I don't want her to get into a possessiveness about it. But what I would do is, uh, this is going to be like a week or two in, you've practiced the drop over and over and over again with the high value items and the low value items. So then you let the dog have, chew on it, practice it three or four times, then let the dog take it. It's going to walk away and go to chew it somewhere a couple feet away from you. When it walks up the first couple times, what I do is I just walk up to the dog and I just toss a treat like that while the dog has the object. I'm not trying to handle it, because if I put my hand in there, I might get bitten. I'm just gonna to toss the treat. As soon as the dog drops, and I toss it from like about five or more feet away, so the dog feels comfortable in dropping it, and, no, and I'm not gonna come in and snatch it, because if I do that, that's gonna make it worse, and the dog's gonna guard it more. So I just toss the treat, the dog drops the marrow bone, gets the treat, and then goes back to the marrow bone. When it touches the lips, its lips on the treat, I would say the word drop then as well. So what we're doing is just teaching the dog to drop and you get your object back again. Now after you've done that for about a week or so, and I would probably do this at least once a day, if not more than that, then I would start getting a little bit closer and, uh, and tossing the treat. And I would do that over the course of a couple days. And then eventually when I get to the point where I could be like this close to the dog and just offer the treat, now make sure you don't put it too close and the dog freezes or if it looks at you sideways, or it starts baring its teeth or growling, it's saying it's not comfortable yet. So I'd back up and, or increase the distance a little bit, practice it a little bit more, and then try it again in a day or two later. What we want the dog to understand is when the human comes, they're not gonna take your stuff, they're gonna make your stuff better. And so the idea is we toss the treat and get the dog just used to dropping it, and then they got the marrow bone. Then eventually we sidle ourselves a little bit closer. And each time we do it, maybe we get one foot closer, one foot closer. And again, if the dog freezes, I'm not comfortable, so increase the space. We have to go at the dog's pace, not our pace. Eventually, we'll, when we get to the point where you just hold out the treat when the dog has the marrow bone in its mouth. Now, first they'll try to turn around and walk away. If they do, that's fine. You can follow them. Just make sure you be careful that you don't corner them and make them feel possessive. Yeah, see, I have nothing in my hand, but she's going for that and left, the mar left this. And we've only had this for a couple minutes. You do this for a couple times uh, a day for a week or two, the dog's more than happy to spit the thing out. And you're building up trust because you're not taking the object away. So when you get to the point where you can actually go like this and hold the treat, the dog drops the marrow bone, put that in his mouth, I would pick up the object. Maybe I might pet it and ask it to sit or lay down or something like that. So it has to change its state to earn it again. Down. Then I let her have it again. Drop. So she hasn't shown any resource guarding for the bones with me. That doesn't mean that she can't be, does she resource guard with, um, uh, with bully sticks? Yeah. Okay, so she has guarded with these in the past. Drop. But she got to hold on to it, she was able to give it up. Now, it's different for me do it, doing it with the other dog. So don't do this, we have a second dog in the house. We don't wanna do it when the other dog's near, because I'm not gonna drop anything if the other dog's nearby, because I'm worried that that dog's gonna take it. The other thing we do is put our dog in a position to succeed. Before we do these sort of things, make sure the dog is sufficiently exercised. Make sure that there's not a lot of things going on in the house that are gonna cause the dog stress or anxiety. If you're doing some construction in the house, this is not a good time to practice this. Wait until after five o'clock when those guys leave, take your dog for a long walk, give it a recovery period, and then start practicing it. Drop. 
it takes a little bit of time, but after a couple weeks, the dog is just conditioned. If I drop it, I get something good, and I get the object back, and then you can start applying it to all sorts of different things. Now, I got this technique out of a book by Gene Donaldson, who is great when it comes to dog behavior and training, uh, and her book is called Mine, M-I-N-E with an exclamation point. If you have a dog that resource guards, I would highly suggest you get the book. It has a very detailed step-by-step -step process of how to deprogram your dog out of, counter uh, out of uh, resource guarding. Okay, so this is how we can uh, condition our dog to drop things instead of guarding a resource.